And here we are with another edition of Pattern Cast, looking at assets, the assets that we trade in the Pattern Cast signal service. And today we're going to take a look at Orange Juice Futures, frozen concentrate, probably made most famous in uh, from an iconic movie called Trading Places with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy, where they tried to thwart. The Duke Brothers, the evil Duke Brothers, played by Ralph Bellamy and uh, Don Amici, who are trying to corner the, uh, the, the futures market, the orange juice futures market, by, by subverting the crop report. And they were able to thwart that, uh, that effort and um, uh, sell against it. They were actually trading on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Now, of course, this was happening back in, I think it was, when was this? Oh, this was in the early 80s, this comedy. And uh, they, they thwarted the Duke brothers and totally ruined them uh, by um, making them think that the crop report was going to be negative, driving the price of orange juice up when, in fact, it came out fine. And so they uh, were selling as the Duke brothers were trying to buy, driving the price up, and they were selling all the way up. And then when the crop report comes out, the price just plummeted, and then they just soaked it up. Um, or I guess they juiced it. Would be they drank it. They drank it up. They, yeah, they drank it up. <laughs> but but that that that's the uh, the one thing when I think of orange juice futures that that you cannot um, but you know not think of trading places an iconic movie which also had Jamie Lee Curtis and there were some fine scenes of her in there. She is beautiful in that movie, by the way. She's a very attractive woman. Yep. Um, so um, commodity dot com has a specific page that deals directly with orange juice and. Ernie, according to commodity.com, historians, they don't even know the precise origin of oranges. Uh, but Chinese manuscripts from 2200 BC reference the fruit. In the 15th century, Spanish explorers introduced oranges in the New World. And by the 19th century, Florida was, there were orange trees uh, growing wild in Florida. And with respect to orange juice futures, people throughout history have produced juice from oranges. But it wasn't until more recent history that large-scale orange juice production became practical. In the 1940s, Cedric Donald Atkins invented a process for producing concentrated juice that could be frozen. Ah, there we go. Combined with the expansion of modern home refrigeration, frozen orange juice concentrate, uh, frozen concentrated orange juice, FCOJ, brought orange juice to millions of consumers and now... Ernie, it's a popular global commodity. And it trades on futures exchanges such as, well, ice, which is where most people in the U.S. would trade it. Yep, yep. And uh, most of the oranges, actually virtually all of the orange juice that is supplied to the United States is grown in Florida. Uh, Brazil um, actually supplies most of the global scene of orange juice. I think they have two and a half times the production of, of Florida. And also there's uh, other countries like China and parts of Europe and other places that, that uh, fill out the rest of the world. Uh, but most of our orange juice comes from Florida. And, and because of that, uh, and because of the unique weather situation down there, uh, i.e. hurricanes, and the occasional frost that will uh, hit Florida, it, uh, and, and because weather is one of the primary factors in affecting the volatility of orange juice prices, orange juice ha tends to be extremely volatile. I know that there are some other uh, factors, too, that uh, you were mentioning earlier uh, that, um, that uh, contribute yeah. to that volatility. Well, it's weather, like you're saying, it's consumer demand, whether or not people are drinking a lot of orange juice, it's production estimates, it, in the movie Trading Places you were talking about earlier, there was a crop report or a weather report one where they were that's what that, that that was what they were using to push prices down or that was actually a phony report and that report and also just so people know if you tried to do that today that would be illegal so Dan Aykroyd and, and Eddie Murphy although the heroes in that movie would not have walked out with briefcases full of money they would have been briefcase full of blues they would have been <laughs> They would have been handcuffed or something. Uh, so anyway, uh, production estimates, food safety concerns, and diseases are what you know drive the price of orange juice. So when you look at the price of orange juice now, and the, it's just been down for month after month after month after month. A decade since '98, there has been a, a steady decline of orange juice prices. Really? Yes. All the way back to 1998. It's been that long, huh? Yep. Okay. Well. 
the, the, it is true that prices are down dramatically over the year. Um, but one thing is also true is that it is definitely a volatile thing, man. It has gone from, if you look at the futures contract in 2004, it was at about 15. It moved up almost in a straight line over the next four years or so to 167, then down to 20 something, then up to 200. Now it's down to 100. Crazy all over the place. And well, I just think, in the last few weeks, I think it's down, what, uh, 15, 20, 25 percent? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say 15 points. It's down more than – it's like 30 points in the last uh, – Okay, that, about, yeah, almost 30 uh, percent because it was at about 130. Now it's down to about 100. Yeah, it's, it's wow. A total freak show. So a lot of people wonder, you know, should should you be buying orange juice right now? And I've got some some questions about that. When I look at the chart, this seems like something would be very difficult to call a bottom on or even a tradable bottom because there's a lot of V bottoms and, and V tops on these things on on this uh, futures contract. So at first, I was a I was a big believer in the orange juice story, but the more I read about it. The more I'm convinced, it's it's a dice roll in a lot of ways. I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, the dollar keeps getting stronger, the weather keeps getting, they say, warmer or better for growing. Those seem to be really, you know, I think it would give me pause to think 100 is the bottom of the futures contract. Yeah, and in terms of demand, I'm wondering, well, why is there less demand? Isn't orange juice supposed to be healthy for you? And it, it used to be uh, that your parents, they wanted you to drink your orange juice because there was vitamin C and it was good for you. It seems that these days now, orange juice is taking a back seat to some other things. May, maybe all of that um, natural sugar is, is, the, yeah. uh, is the deterrent. I don't know. You know at at commodity.com, they mentioned there are three reasons why people might want to invest in orange juice. And the first one they mentioned is interesting. They say bet on global warming. Now, you see, if I think global warming is, a, is, a, is an actual issue, that would indicate to me bumper crops of orange juice around the world. So I don't know why you would – why global warming would give you a reason to buy orange juice futures. Um, so do, do, you, do you know what the reasoning might be on that? No, I you know, I think that if uh, the the Earth warms a little bit, that'll increase the amount of total area that the, that'll be available for agriculture. Right. Uh, but in terms of orange juice, I don't know how much that actually affects that. Uh, you know, uh, rising temperatures maybe in Brazil may create more desert area and and droughts. Right. Uh, it might okay. be good for Florida, and maybe it would allow people uh, a little bit north of Florida to grow orange juice. Yeah, I think yeah, I think yeah, it, it's probably myopic to think about the weather in terms of the U.S. because there was uh, drought conditions recently in Brazil, and and a lot of people, from what I've read, uh, argue that's what was pushing prices up in the recent past. So I guess if you believe global warming is real and you think weather patterns are getting more severe, then the severity of the weather changes is what could be a concern. So if if you think that it's going to get really hot and really dry, then that would be negative. Well, there's one thing for sure, that there isn't any strong correlation one way or the other. It just seems to be volatile as hell. And, uh, and, and I think it's because of a, 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 large, um, a large basket of competing factors that are affecting the price. Did you, did you read this, this? It's a very long and extensive, and I'm going to put a link in the more information section of the video. Did you read the commodity.com article I'm talking about here? Cause no. There's a lot, okay, well, listen to this. Traders, they say, should consider three risks of investing in orange juice. Number one, growing concerns about obesity and diabetes have put all items with sugar in the crosshairs of health advocates. Orange juice has high levels of natural sugars. So that was, you know, you were mentioning sugar a moment ago. I mean, that that's, that might be a concern. Yeah. And, yeah. I, uh, I, I, that's the only thing that I can think of. And, and whenever I've and, – and I often go on a diet. I know that you don't have to, but I do. I look at things that I can eat or drink, and orange juice is definitely not on the list because they say that the large amount of sugar in it isn't really that great for somebody who's trying to lose weight. No, it is not. Anything that's got, and anything that's uh, got sugar related is probably not good for folks who want to drop some pounds, and so maybe that's part of it. But if you um, want to stem off a cold, maybe it is high in vitamin actually, C. Vitamin D is better than that. I really? recommend. I had my blood work done recently. My vitamin D level was 75, which is 
But y'all look it up. Where, just stop what you're doing. Go look at what you what you want to be at to be optimally healthy. 75 is a grand slam home run. So y'all need to take your vitamin D. Well, you can get that um, by hanging it out in the sun too. I do both. Awesome. Uh, but, and so, so this commodity.com article goes on to talk about how you can invest in orange juice futures. And they mention, uh, not orange juice futures, but how you can invest in the orange juice story. And there are futures. And they mention on a complexity level, listen to this, on a rating of one to five, with one being easy and five being hard, they say that trading orange juice futures is a five. Yeah, they, I, can, I can see that. A complexity of five. Look at the chart, man. <laughs> it's... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but then uh, they say that if you want to trade an ETF, there's no ETF that specifically invests in orange juice. However, the Elements Rogers International Commodity Agriculture Total Return ETN. Wow, that's a the R J A. It's R J. But did, I mean, you have you heard of the R J? No, but that's a mouthful. <laughs> the Elements Rogers International Commodity Agriculture Total Return ETN. Um, two percent of that basket of commodities is, is orange juice. Two percent. So really, the only way you get exposure to it, I guess, is orange juice futures. And I would say and options on I, futures. Yeah, and options on futures. I I like the chart on orange juice personally. I'm a sucker for a 25 percent drop in a month or so. So as a, quote, day trade or short-term trade, I'd like to believe a, a, a bounces in here. It's also at well, a multi-year low, too. Yeah, yeah. I'll admit to you, I'm personally going to hang tight on the orange juice trade. When I first thought about this, I looked at the chart, and, we, you know, we had talked about this both privately and publicly before. I thought, well, the chart looks pretty good. You expand it out, you look at the news, and you realize it's probably above my pay grade to make a fundamental call on orange juice. Yeah, so as we know... Uh, futures, they have two basic markets. They have the cash buyers who are actually in the orange juice market who are expecting either delivery or um, or to deliver the product uh, after a contract expires. And they use those contracts to help stave off any kind of volatility in their business. And then the other side of the business are the speculators. Now, there aren't as that many speculators in the orange juice futures because of that complexity, I believe. Uh, so... You know, you, you, as a, as a as an investor, that's a tough call. You know, how can you say yes, orange juice is going to go up when in fact it could continue to go down? However, with the pattern cast system, it doesn't seem to really take any of that into consideration. It's just looking at patterns and and, and uh, short term trade. So, uh, I, right. I think that that's probably the best way for a speculator to get involved in this. It's interesting because. Um you know, uh, we're talking about fundamental stories and, and we're talking about the big picture stuff, but what Patterncast looks at is it's looking at a window as of this recording. Now, if this if people listen to this a year from now and our system has evolved, then it might not be exactly what I'm saying now, but with Orange Juice Futures, we're looking at a four-day window. If you get a signal on Orange Juice Futures with the Patterncast, it's a four-day window. It's not... Any, it's not farther out than that. So what we're talking about here would really apply, you know, to right. the long, uh, to the short term. But yeah, if I put it this way, I will not buy orange juice futures unless we get a much bigger push lower, and I'll buy on. And let's say that we get a move down of another thirty points in a month or something. I might come in and, and put a little money to work then. But outside of that, I will trade it if pattern cast gives me a signal. Now yep. that I will do. Yep guaranteed on that because that's not looking at the fundamental stuff it's short-term trading but uh you know coming into this when when I, I don't ever have a preconceived notion of what i want to do but before i started looking and researching this i was definitely on the buy side and now i'm on the think about buy side <laughs> or just maybe avoid side or sit on the sidelines and watch it and say you know from your sunny chair and say hmm look at orange juice yeah with my glass of orange juice watching uh, orange juice futures fall, I'm, but I, you know, or maybe it, um, you know, whip out Netflix and uh, look up trading places and watch that a few times. Is is trading places on Netflix? I don't know, but it should be. It's a okay, great movie. It be. Um, I I've, I bet you I've seen that movie twenty times. I love it. It's a good movie. Um, so my bottom line on orange juice is this: I like the chart now. I love the chart now for a bounce, which tells me I'm probably early. 
So I'm going to wait for more downside to buy. As a long-term play, I need more downside. I I think it's overdone. I think that people, there may be a fad of people not drinking orange juice. I think they'll pick that back up again. But at 100 right now in orange juice futures, I'm not ready. The weather concerns, I think those were all overblown. I think the whole global warming thing is a, is a farce, so I'm not worried about that. The chart, don't lie. And if the chart gets better long term, I will like it as a purchase. I'm not ready for that yet. But if pattern cast gives us a signal to buy or sell, I'm taking a signal without question. That's what I'm going to do. Right there with you, man.